Hi, I'm Elsa. And I'm Juliana. And we're going to talk about our calf project, which is about complimentary coffee cups. So for question one, we knew we wanted the volume of cup A to be equal to the volume of cup B. So then we found our equations in respect to the y-axis and we integrated it from zero to h, because h is our height of the cups. So our first equation is f of y squared dy, and our second equation is k minus f of y squared dy, because we just wanted to find the volume of the second cup. So that's why we subtracted out the volume of the first cup. And then we foiled out the second equation and got f of y squared dy equal to the integral of k squared minus 2kfy plus f of y squared dy. And then we subtracted the f of y squared dy over to get 0 on one side and was left with the integrals from 0 to h k squared dy minus 2kf of y dy. And then we realized we could pull out k, which is a constant, and then was able to add the 2f of y dy to the other side. We rewrote it as the integral from 0 to h k, d, k dy equals the integral from 0 to h 2f of y dy. And then we integrated it and got ky equals 2 times the integral, because we pulled out the 2, of f of y dy. And then we evaluated ky from 0 to h, and we got k times h minus k times 0, which goes to 0. And then to isolate the k, we divided out the h, and we got the answer that k equals 2 times the integral of f of y dy divided by h. Two, we set area 1 equal to area 2 because a1 plus a2 is a rectangle, and when you solve that, you get hk because the area of a rectangle is length times base, which is h times k. And then we, for h times k, we multiplied the h back over, and we set that equal to each other from the equation we got from question one. So we did a1 plus a2 equals 2 integral 0 to h of f of y dy. And then we did area 1 equals 0 to h of f of y dy because that's the area of cup A. So then, since they're complementary, we did a1 plus a2 equals 2 of these, which is also equal to 2 of the area 1. And then a2 equals 2a1 minus a1 which equals a1. So that proves that the area of cup A is equal to the area of cup B when the volume of cup A is equal to the volume of cup B. So for question three, we had to use Pappas' theorem to explain how we found the volume for cup A and B. So Pappas' theorem says that to find the volume of an object, so in our instance the coffee cups, we had to use the area multiplied by the distance that the centroid travels around the y-axis. So we have our centroid equation, which is y bar is equal to 1 over the area from the integral of a to b times 1 half f of x squared dx. But we knew that we need to take our equation in respect to the y-axis, and so we plugged in all of our found numbers, and we have that y bar is equal to 1 over our area, which is the integral from 0 to h of f of y dy, multiplied by the integral from 0 to h one half f of y squared dy. And so for volume, the equation for volume is two pi times the area times the distance. So then we plugged in what we knew and we had, and we noticed that our area simplifies with some of the equation of our distance equation that we have up here. So then it gets reduced to volume of cup A is equal to the integral from 0 to h, half of f of y squared dy times 2 pi. We then notice that 2 pi and 1 half can be further reduced, so then we're left with the equation of the volume of cup A is equal to pi times the integral from 0 to h of f of y squared dy. So, we knew that the area of cup 1 plus the area of cup 2 was equal to kh, and so we knew that if we manipulated the equations, the results would be consistent with questions one and questions two, which is what led us to evaluate that the volume of cup B is equal to the volume of cup A. So for question number four, the first step was to find what H equaled. We took a standard coffee cup and measured it to get that H equals four inches. And then the next step was to find the equation for X equals F of Y. We did Y equals negative one tenth because we needed it to be rotated and stretched. And then we did x minus 4 to move our graph to the right. And then we got the 2 by dividing 
4 by 2 because it's h divided by 2. And then we needed the inverse equation to find what x equaled. So we started to rewrite the equation, and the first step to that was subtracting 2 to the other side, and then multiplying negative a tenth to get 10, and then get rid of the square by square rooting it, and then the last step was to add 4 to each side, and we got x equals radical negative 10 parentheses y minus 2 parentheses plus 4.